Thanks again for your attention and, and for allowing me to talk today. I'm hoping that with some of the information I present that we can suggest that inattention to surgically correctable diseases is not affordable. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, as often we do, we'll present uh, just one little case, but Laura arrived to Operation Restore Hope Cleft Camp in Cebu, Philippines in 2012. Uh, later she wrote us uh, a letter thanking us, but this is one of the quotes from there. I wasn't able to proceed to college because of poverty. I did not find a job because of my condition, so I stayed home for good. I can't travel anywhere because I'm unable to show the people around me. I feel a coward. I've never been there in different places here in Cebu, like a big mall. Sometimes I feel that I'm out of this world. This is just some pictures of her. Uh, on your left is how she first started with a uh, poorly uh, reconstructed lip. She had her, uh, as she was 18, she still had her palate unrepaired. And uh, uh, cleft lip surgery is one of those darling things for surgeons because you have an immediate transformation of the aesthetic look of a, of a child or an adult. And in that regard, it, it's one of those things that's fairly easy to, to raise funds for. But uh, certainly, if we think about the communication issues that come with, with this disease, it's one of those things that I think that we should be able to uh, put a little bit of, of uh, figure to this, not just looking at the aesthetics. Being an otolaryngologist, we're going to, I'm going to sort of present a couple of things in relationship both to cleft as it relates to communication disorders, and also just a brief uh, look at uh, hearing loss. Uh, a study in the United States showed that even here in the United States, if there was any communication disorder, and that included just dysphonia, which would be hoarseness, uh, that you can have as high as a threefold increase in unemployment. Uh, many jobs, of course, are just completely unavailable if you have a hearing loss or inability to speak. And, of course, is that even if you were able to get a job, you're going to decrease your earning power if you are not able to adequately communicate. So. We're going to look at cleft, and I'm going to look at the two areas of the world that I've in, been involved with, uh, India and the Philippines. And what I'm going to do is take some population type data from CIA fact book. We're going to estimate the overall incidence of cleft lip and palate at about 1 in 750 live births. Now, this is sort of the U.S. kind of figure, but if you think about it, we even know from English studies in England itself where the socioeconomic factors actually drive up the incidence of cleft lip and palate. One of the concerns with that, though, is, is it just that if you can't communicate, are you more likely to be socioeconomically deprived? That certainly is an issue. But uh, using this number, we most probably are underestimating the number of children with uh, uh, cleft lip and palate. Uh, another assumption that I'm going to make, which is again most probably inappropriate, I'm going to assume that, that there's going to be an equal distribution of care, because otherwise I can't tell you how many children are going to have their cleft lip or palate repaired. But what I'm going to do is look at the number of hospital beds per thousand people and compare it to the United States at 3.1 per thousand people and suggest that uh, if there's equal distribution of care, we would anticipate then a certain proportion of those children with cleft lip and palate would be repaired. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is going to suggest that, again, as in the United States study, unemployment rate three times the national rate if you had a cleft lip or palate, and assume a 30% a reduction in earning power based on some data from the Philippines. Uh, in that regard, it, what we looked at is uh, if you look at the average for someone in the manufacturing uh, field where that they wouldn't really have to do a whole lot of, uh, of oral communication uh, versus a receptionist who would, we noted about a 30% reduction. Interestingly, this seems to, to hold across the board in a lot of different, even developed countries, if you have a communication issue. I do think that this is going to underestimate the financial impact. 
It doesn't at all account for the social impact. Remember that in many developing countries, if you have a facial deformity, it can be considered a curse. And with that, the family, the child, everyone is sort of uh, uh, restricted from normal society. So again, if anything, I am anticipating this underestimates the impact. Now again, uh, we'll start off in India. Uh, in India in, in 2003, I started uh, with a, a faith-based hospital in Calcutta, India. At that point in time, there were approximately 14 million people in, in Calcutta. Uh, there was no cleft or craniofacial team in that community. Uh, uh, we started off with cleft camps where we would come and do uh, some 20 to 30 patients per year. At that time, I was training two surgeons to do cleft work. We became the first smile train accredited hospital in Northeast India, and with that, now they're doing over 500 cleft cases per year at Mercy Hospital. So, you know, again, in my way of thinking, if we can educate and uh, develop uh, financial infrastructure, we can make a difference. But let's just look at the impact in India of uh, the cleft. We have about 1.2 billion people and growing in India. Assuming one per 750 live births with a birth rate, birth rate of 22.5 per thousand, that means that there's most probably over 40,000 new cleft kids per year. But that also means there's about uh, 1.8 million clefts in their population. If we assume, based off of the number of beds per thousand people and related to the United States, they have 0 0.9 hospital beds per thousand people versus the U.S. at 3.1. So that means that most probably less than one-third of the children with clefts will end up having surgery in an ideal world, and we know it isn't that way. Uh, based on those beds, uh, uh, again, no more than 30% of the children will have been corrected. So, what is the impact in India? If 30% have been repaired, that would be about uh, 540,000. There remain 1.2 million plus peoples with cleft lip or palate that are unrepaired. The unemployment rate in India is about 9.8%. If we assume a threefold increase because of a communication disorder, or 29.4%, that's uh, 370 plus thousand people unemployed because of their cleft lip and palate. Again, this is an underestimate. Uh, in all of my travels to India, I rarely, rarely saw anyone in the marketplace or any place with an unrepaired cleft lip, and I know that they are out there. The average wage in India at the current time is $450 per year. So the impact, if we make those assumptions, the impact from un unemployment is almost $167 million American per year. If we look at the impact from decreased wage, assuming that those who uh, uh, are able to get employment have a 30% reduction in salary, and we assume that uh, uh, we have that number employed, is we have about uh, $120 million loss in wage just from a 30% decrease in wage. So if we look at the unemployment, plus reduction in earning power. In India, we can estimate, again, most probably very, very low, $287 million plus dollars in lost revenue. Now, the cost of a surgical intervention, it seems very crazy when we look at American terms. Uh, Smile Train basically donates to the hospital who's doing a cleft lip or palate surgery $200 dollars and $250 per case. And in India, this is one of those uh, growth industries. The hospitals are absolutely excited to get $250 per case. We did a cost accounting at Mercy Hospital in Calcutta, and this is again a faith-based hospital that primarily had 40% of their, uh, their uh, structure was for charity care. They uh, had about $300 per case, and that was including a week in the hospital for each of these children. Uh, they took the additional 50 bucks from their charity budget. But 
again, people are like fighting for these cases. 250 bucks per primary case is actually quite reasonable. So if we took even 300 per case, uh, looking at the millions of dollars lost in air revenue, that could translate to over 9 million surgical interventions per year at $300 per case. If we look at the cost of unemployment plus reduction in earning power, and we consider a 10% tax rate, the government potentially at a 10% tax rate could accrue from taxes uh, $28 million. If that we used just looking at the new cleft cases per year at 300 bucks per case, we could take care of all of the new clefts every year in India just from the accrued uh, tax revenue. In the Philippines, I don't have quite the same amount of, of, of sure data, but they do have 88.5 million people. Uh, I have been told that their uh, rate of children being born with cleft is almost double that elsewhere, but again, I can't find good data to, uh, to make that assumption. So what we're going to do is still use a 1 in 750. They have a birth rate of uh, 25.4 per thousand, which would suggest at least 3,300 new clefts per year. That also means 132,000 clefts in the population. Now, in the Philippines, uh, it's a, quite a different place, and they have 0 0.5 hospital beds per thousand people. So that would mean that no more than 15% of their children, if we had truly an equitable, equitable distribution of uh, health care, uh, only 15% could have been repaired. Now again, uh, this really will overestimate the number of children who may have been uh, affected by that. In my work in the Philippines, uh, we have uh, tried to end up doing some training, but again, because of the uh, medical infrastructure there and the financial issues, it's been very difficult to get uh, plastic surgeons or otolaryngologists who are interested in being trained in this. Uh, the, uh, most of the physicians are located in major uh, cities, but even there, it's been difficult. Uh, so let's suggest that 15% have been repaired. That would be about 19,800 children. There remains about 112,000 persons with cleft lip and palate that are unrepaired. Now let's go back through the same numbers. Unemployment in the Philippines is about 7.3%. If we have a three-fold increase because of the communication disorder associated with cleft lip and palate, we're going to have about uh, 24,571 which are gonna be unemployed. Average annual income in the Philippines is $2,603 per year. The impact from unemployment will be around $64 million. We look at the impact from decreased salary, secondary to unavailable higher paying jobs. Again, a 30% reduction in salary is what we uh, estimate. We assume that we have over 87,000 people who are affected but uh, uh, are actually employed, if, they, if that we assume that they were going to make the, uh, the bid uh, $2,600 per year, we're going to have about uh, $228 million is as they would have been able to make, but if we have a 30% decrease, that accounts to about uh, 68 million in, in decreased wages based on their difficulty with communication. So we add the two together. We've got the cost of unemployment plus a reduction in earning power. So we're now at about 132 uh, million dollars annually. A lot. Now the average tax rate in the Philippines for their medium rate wage is 20%. So that means that we have about a $26 million lost in revenue by the Philippine government because of the difficulties for communication in children with cleft lip and palate. Now let's say that we, I don't have really good numbers, but let's say that, uh, that 
the same kind of numbers from India are the same in, in the Philippines, that it costs about 300 bucks per primary surgery. They give you about 88,000 surgeries could be done annually. Pretty impressive. That's just from the increase in tax revenue by allowing people to have good communication and therefore better paying jobs. Now, I love this little picture. It's not a kid with cleft lip and palate. There's a little beautiful girl in the Philippines. But it really speaks to what hearing loss does, because you can't look at somebody and say, oh, you have a hearing loss. But remember, is if, if you were here today and you didn't have amplification and you had a hearing loss, much of what I was saying and everybody else is saying you'd be missing. That absolutely impacts your ability to be a productive member financially in society. Now we're going to look a little bit of the data from Kenya, uh, just one of the many uh, uh, co countries in Africa which has been uh, looked at. Uh, population of uh, 43 million, growth rate at 2.4 percent, whereas the United States at 0.9 percent. World Health Organization data suggests that the incidence of significant hearing loss in Kenya is 2.2 per thousand. Now, right next to that, look at the developing, the developed countries, so U.S., Western Europe, etc. 0.05 to 0.23 per thousand there. That implies that the incidence of hearing loss in Kenya is 9.6 to 44 times greater than the incidence that we would see in the United States, for example. We have no data to suggest there's a higher incidence of inherited deafness. So we would have in Kenya approximately 94,000 people with significant hearing loss. Now, if we assume that most of the congenital sensory neuro hearing loss would be about the same, what we're looking at are what are the other causes of hearing loss that may end up being uh, able to be addressed surgically. Uh, we of course have in that area, it's a, called the uh, meningitis belt, and there's a very high incidence of meningitis that usually causes sensory neuro hearing loss. Uh, but let's think about chronic otitis media with perforation, infection with drainage, all of whom can be surgically correctable and improvement in hearing, as well as trauma. Now, so again, many of these additional cases could be surgically correctable. In the United States, a survey suggested that there's approximately a $12,000 per year drop in earnings if there's a hearing loss in the, the household, if mom or dad. Average wage in the United States at 41,000 per year suggesting really, again, about a 30% drop in earnings potential if you have a significant hearing loss. It's been estimated in the United States that over $100 billion per year loss in wages is due to hearing impairment. Interestingly, if the person who has a hearing loss has a hearing aid, and where's the hearing aid? There's a 50% mitigation in that loss. Now, let's make some assumptions again. So if we're going to assume that 50% of the non-congenital hearing loss in the United States is from chronic otitis media, and let's take the highest number that they had there in terms of developing countries uh, at 0 0.23 per thousand, uh, let's say that all of those were inherited. We have the same rate, again, that's over-assumption. Let's say we have the same rate in, the, uh, in developing countries and in Kenya. And what we find is, is that maybe as high as 9,895 of those patients with hearing loss uh, would have an inherited disease. But then that means that we have, from infectious disease, trauma, or other kinds of things, about 84,000 people. Well, let's even give things. Let's say that only 50% of those could be surgically correctable. That means at least 42,000 people there may have surgically correctable hearing loss. The survey in Africa suggested that uh, use of hearing aids in the developing world is le far less than 1%. So we're going to assume no mitigation in wage loss. In Kenya, average income about $400 per year. So if there's a 30% reduction 
at least the annual income for those patients or people at $280. With a loss of wage, $120 per person. Uh, so that ends up, even in Kenya, being at about $11 million total loss for the hearing impaired population. And if we could suggest that half of those people could be surgically correctable, then we're talking about another uh, $5 million increased in income just from that. So there's, only, there's less than one otolaryngologist per million people in all of Africa. That includes South Africa, where they actually do have some medical subspecialists. There's a significant lack of training programs. There's a significant lack of hospital infrastructure. So in conclusion, the financial impact of surgical disease affecting communication is in the millions of dollars in developing countries. And only through the development of medical and financial infra infrastructure can we mitigate this. And finally, again, to what we started with, inattention to surgically correctable causes of communication disorders is not affordable. Thank you.